Okay, so let's do a bit of yoga. Um, and we're going to start with some basics. So you can get yourself into a nice, comfortable seated position, uh, whether it be cross-legged, uh, on your knees, or even sitting in a chair. Um, and if you want, use a cushion just to lift your buttocks a tiny bit and get yourself nice and comfortable. So first things first, we're going to tune in to the breath and learn a little something about our breathing apparatus. First and foremost, it's always best and most important to breathe in through the nose. The nostrils house a filtering system that warm, moisten and clean the air before it reaches your vital organs, your lungs and your heart. So breathing through the nose is good. And take your time about it. Take a longer breath in than you usually would. And a longer breath out. Empty the lungs completely, fully, consciously. Unclench your teeth. Allow your tongue to relax in the mouth. Let your shoulders release and drop downward. And each time you do take a breath in, think of lifting internally, externally, rising upward, lifting the flesh, And when you exhale, keep that lift, however, relax and release into the space you have created. So when you breathe in through the nose, you're taking in warm, moistened, cleaned air. The air goes down through uh, the back of the neck, down the throat, into the top of the chest, and then it splits into the bronchi, two tubes that go into your left and right lung. And your lungs fill up from the bottom to the top. And as you breathe out, they empty from the top to the bottom and the air swirls round and pushes back up through the bronchi, the two tubes, and then they connect in to the trachea and the air exits at the back of the throat. Unclench your teeth, soften the skin on your face, have a slight smile if you want. Take the time to follow the passage of breath into you, into your lungs, out of your lungs and out of you. Now when you breathe in and the lungs inflate, the rib cage opens and it is like a cage. It opens equally front, back, side to side. This is making room for your lungs to inflate. And as you exhale, the cage closes equally side to side, front and back, and it pushes the air out. Now, as the rib cage is opening, the diaphragm, the large expanse of muscle beneath the rib cage, pushes down and it gently massages your internal organs pushes down and then as you exhale it relaxes into its original position see if you can tune into this take another couple of rounds of breath unclench your teeth relax the skin on your face soften your shoulders Lift internally, 
when you breathe in, pull up from the pubis to the navel, from the navel to the breastbone, from the breastbone all the way up to the crown of your head and beyond. Making space. When you make space internally, the air that you're taking in with the oxygen gets into all those parts that have been hidden for years possibly and it breathes new life into them. Feel it. Experience. Savour. And once you gain this greater connection with the breath, the movement to follow are going to flow that much easier. And yes, it takes time, it takes patience, it takes discipline, but we've all uh, been given this space in time now to do it, to try it. It has many benefits. So let's take our arms out to the side as we breathe in. As we exhale, let's rotate the arms and rotate from the shoulder girdle. Avoid just turning your wrist. Turn the whole of your arm. So you're challenging your thumb to go down towards the floor and your little pinky finger to go up towards the sky, whether you're indoors or outdoors. Another breath in, create more space, lifting up internally, pubis to navel, navel to breastbone. And then as you exhale, extend your energy along your arms and begin to stretch the fingers downward. It doesn't have to be too far if it's just a tiniest bit to begin with. You've got to start somewhere. Now keeping the shoulders nice and relaxed, breathe in and draw the arms up. Keep the teeth unclenched, skin on the face soft, and bring the hands together over the crown of the head. Try and get, keep the shoulders in line with the ears. So as you bend the shoulders, they're in line with the ears. And the heels of the hands come down to rest just above the crown of the head. Take a breath in through the nose. And as you exhale, allow the shoulder blades to draw towards each other. Inhalation is all about the lift, the creating space, the elevation. And exhaling is all about softening, releasing and relaxing, letting go to settle into the space you have made. Unclench your teeth, relax the tongue in the mouth, allow it to float in the middle of the mouth. And then breathe in, raise the arms up, exhale, let them come down to the side. A nice breath in, draw the shoulders up towards the ears, exhale, sigh the breath out and let go. Let's do some basic work with the spinal cord. Keeping a strong, healthy, supple spine is one of the most important things you can do for yourself. It's the greatest health of all that you can give yourself. The connection between the body and the mind. You have 33 bones in your spinal cord. Some of us have 34 and uh, the, the base of the spine around um, the coccyx and the sacrum, uh, the bones are flat and fused together. Um, and then above that, uh, each um, cervical bone uh, can lift and create space, allowing the discs in between to gain greater movement. So when you breathe in, you think of your spinal cord and just lift it up. It's almost like you're restacking blocks, leaving the tiniest bit of space between them. Sometimes by closing the eyes, you can actually look 
deeper inwards. You can see yourself, your inner self, with greater clarity. So we're going to take a gentle twist to the right. We're going to breathe in first through the nostrils. We're going to lift and create space, pulling up pubis to navel, navel to breastbone. We're even going to think about the external layers of skin and we're going to lift them upwards. We're going to bring our left hand over to our right knee. Take our right hand gently behind us just to place it at the base of our spine. And then from the bottom of the spine, we begin to turn. So, as we know now, the bottom bones are flat and fused together, so they can turn as a whole. And then every time you breathe in, you'll lift the cervical uh, bone just above, and you'll create space and you'll turn it. And you'll also turn the skin on your body, okay? So you can even get your hands touching it, feeling it drawing it round. You go up through the thoracic spine. There's 12 bones of the thoracic spine. They're the ones that are connected to your ribs. So as you breathe in, and remember you can feel that rib cage opening, your spine is still lifting, and then exhale, you're rotating into that space you have made. At the top of the uh, spine, with the head and the neck. Your skull is the, the one thing that's going to turn last of all. And at the very tip of your spine are the two bones, the axis and the atlas. And the pivotal, when you think of the amount of movement your skull has, you'll bear that in mind as you get to the top of your twist and look over your shoulder. Keep the breath flowing, lengthen the breath, enjoy it, feel it, and as you breathe in and lift up, see if there's parts of the body, the, the flesh, that are um, being a bit stagnant or, or a bit not working. Lift them up, give them a wake-up call. The mind is very powerful. It can tell the body what to do and the body will respond. Now stay lifted as you come back to your central position. And one of the greatest things of yoga is that when you practice to one side, you practice to the other. And this allows both sides of the brain and the mind to eventually become equal. So let's bring our right hand over onto our left knee. Place your left hand just behind the buttocks. Breathe in, lift up. Lift the flesh. Lift and make space at the hips. Actually think of picking them up. Remember, the mind tells the body what to do. The body responds. Breathe in. You start twisting from the base of the spine, the lowest part. And you'll turn through the center and then the upper. And the head and neck turn at the last section. You unclench your teeth, you breathe fully, deeply, consciously. Just breathe in and keep the lift as you return to your central position. Give yourself a little bit of freedom of movement, movement in between. Remember as well, when you, when you get to the fullness of a position, take the time to uh, have a view of the whole self and see if there's any pockets of your body that are holding on to the tension. Maybe you've done the twist and you've got your shoulders up by your ears and you're gritting your teeth. Um, you can actually soften and let it all go in the breath out. Breath equals movement. Movement equals breath. They are one and they are connected. So let's do a forward flexion of the spine. If you've been uh, cross-legged in one position for a long while, you can uh, undo the legs and recross in uh, the other position. You can do a forward um, bend with your legs extended forwards. Uh, you can do a forward bend 
from your knees, uh, just in these early stages of your practice, get to a position uh, that's comfortable, your foundation, a nice comfortable starting position. So again, we look at the breath in, we let it go, we relax our shoulders, we unclench our teeth, we soften the skin in our face, on our face even. And then we breathe in and we go down deep into the root uh, of our posture, the seat, and we lift up internally and externally. So pull up pubis to navel. Imagine it being a zip and you're zipping up. And then navel to breastbone, breastbone to crown of head. So even as you're gonna begin to hinge forward, you're forever lifting upwards. And think about the hips. They're a ball and socket joint, the femur bone, the thigh bone. Um, if you imagine when you close your eyes and look in deep at your inner self, it's a ball and socket joint. So if this is the top of the thigh bone and this is the hip, you breathe in, it can lift and make space. And then as you hinge forward, it's able to glide over. If you don't make the lift and you just try and bend forward and, and, and crush in the middle and round your shoulders, you're not getting the true uh, foundation of where the movement can um, originate from. So let's breathe in, take our arms to the side, exhale, rotate from the shoulder girdle. We're not just turning our wrists, we are turning our arms fully. We can feel the organic energy stretching along them. Take our fingertips downwards, keeping our shoulders soft and relaxed, we take our arms up and let's link our thumbs and raise the palms of our hands, pull up internally and as you exhale, begin to reach forward. Keep your buttocks, the weight of, of your body into both buttocks equally and evenly as you bring the hands forward still stretching forward, relax the shoulders. It doesn't matter how far you get forward. It doesn't matter if you're here. As long as you've lifted, you know, you lift all this skin and then hinge over and try and keep it with a straight spine rather than rounding like this. We have an actual joint in the back here which would make it round like that but then you begin to crush down um, in the stomach and that stops a good flow of breath and it actually stops the fullness of the stretch forward. Just keep thinking about uh, lifting your hips out of the sockets with every breath in and then exhaling, relaxing forward. Unclench your teeth, unfurrow the brow, Breathe in through the nose and exhale. Feel the stretch traveling down through the back of the body into the sitting bones, keeping your sitting bones connected with the foundation of the ground. And you breathe in and you can feel the air filling your lungs. Your rib cage expanding as we spoke of 20 minutes ago. Your rib cage expands as you breathe in, making way for your lungs to inflate. And then the rib cage closes, the sides, the front, the back, they all close at the same time, pressing the lungs to uh, empty. The lungs shrivel. They go very small, like little tiny prunes. And then, they burst into life again with the next breath in. So let's pull our tummy in, the navel. Think about buttoning it to the base of the spine as you walk your hands back towards you to sit up once again. Forward flexion of the spine. So we've done a twist, rotation of the spine, to the right, to the left, forward flex, 
Now let's do lateral. Lateral is to the side. So we're just going to take our right hand, place it on the mat beside us, stretch our left hand up. And when we stretch, we're stretching from our left hip. We're lifting the hip out. We're reaching up to the fingertips. And as we exhale, we're allowing the body to stretch over to the side. Again, it doesn't matter if you're here, just a small stretch to begin with, because every time you breathe in, you're going to make more space. And when you breathe out, millimetre by millimetre, you're going to be able to stretch over. And after some days and weeks and months and years of practice, you'll be able to bend your spine laterally. Keeping your elbow in line with your hip. So avoid dropping forward. If you're rounding like this and trying to get really far down really quickly, you're missing the true stretch, okay? You're gonna be stretching through the whole of the side of the body. So it's a lift from the hip up to the armpit, through the arm, and then you're breathing to come up again. We stretch the left hand out to the side, place it down onto the mat, reach the right arm up from the right hip. It goes all the way up. Take your time here, breathe in, enjoy. Exhale. Little by little, allow the spine to bend laterally. Keep your elbow in line with your hip. Keep both sitting bones connected to the ground. Both sitting bones on the foundation of the position. Unclench your teeth. Relax the skin on your face. Breathe in and come up to a central position. Lateral flexation of the spine backward flex of the spine. So if you want to bring yourself round onto hands and knees, we'll do a basic backward uh, flexion of the spine. Ustrasana, the camel. So if you do have problems with your knees as well, you've always got your um, trusty pillow or use a blanket, a folded blanket, folded towel. Anything soft just to put under your knees if you, if you so need. So we're going to come up onto the knees. Now you can turn your toes under. I'm not sure. I might have to move back a little bit so that you can see the toes. Okay. Again, before you make any movement into the fullness of the posture, you want to get good space. So you're breathing in, you're lifting, you're actually already, you're lifting up through your thighs, you're thinking about lifting your hips away from the femur bone, you're thinking about pulling up pubis to navel, navel to uh, breastbone, rising up, you're thinking about lifting the flesh, don't leave the flesh behind, get that lifting as well. You can lift outwardly and inwardly. You can place your hands on your hips, if they're up here, that's at your waist. You need them down here on your hips so you can actually give a little bit of a helping hand. Your thumbs on your innominate bone, you can lift it. And then as you exhale, drop the elbows back, drop the shoulders back, dome the chest upwards. And gently drop the head and neck. And breathe. And when you come up, pull the tummy in, breathe in, and bring yourself back to a central position. Now you might not get that far. You might just, it might just be the tiniest gradient of taking the chin up, but it's a beginning, it's a start. And you'll notice that as you gain more connection with your breath, you begin to understand the flow more you will feel it all fall into place. Yoga is a jigsaw, a scientific jigsaw of the body and the mind. And it takes time to put a jigsaw together. You have to look at the pieces, know where they go. 
So take your time. And then you can curl your toes under, take a seat, bring your knees together, bring your heels together, walk your hands forward, and just gently lower down, lower your head down to the mat into what's known as child pose. Keep your buttocks connected to the heels of your feet if you can. If you can't to begin with, you can always put a pillow underneath to soften. And just relax and let go. Again, whilst in this position, look at the breath that's entering your rib cage. Feel the compression of your rib cage against your thighs. Take the breath into the back of the body, into the upper back, and your back rib cage. Feel that open as you breathe in. And be aware of that sensation of letting go and relaxing as you breathe out. Lengthen the breath. Calm the mind. Allow the body to feed from the movements you have just made. And then you'll pull your tummy in and you'll walk your hands in towards your knees. And just bring yourself round into a comfortable position once again. So a very simplistic little half hour of yoga but hopefully with um, some good pointers in there to start you off. Get your breath right first and foremost, and then ease of movement will follow. So too will the connection of mind and body and a balance will prevail. <laughs>